Grim Dawn is an apocalyptic fantasy ARPG that initially released back in 2016. This game has had three major DLC releases since launch with its fourth new expansion recently announced for 2024. This year I've covered quite a few ARPGs, I've revisited Last Epoch, Walson and Diablo 4, as well as just becoming more of an ARPG fan in general. The last time I covered Grim Dawn was back in 2016, so I decided now would be a good time to revisit the game and see how it compares to newer ARPG releases, especially with the new expansion on the horizon. But first, today's sponsor Zenless Zone Zero, Hoyoverse's latest masterpiece, now gearing up for its second beta test following rave previews at Gamescom and TGS. Zenless Zone Zero sets itself apart with a unique art style that enhances audiovisual immersion. Players can explore a roster of diverse characters, each rendered in a distinct anime style and backed by modern, groove-heavy music. You find yourself in New Eridu, humanity's last bastion. Here, amidst chaotic and vibrant factions, you take on the crucial role of a proxy, bridging the gap between the city and the hollows. This story is uniquely told through a mix of comics, dialogues and CG, immersing you in an intense urban life experience. The game's dynamic, movie-like combat system, combining cap Activating visuals with heart-pounding action promises an experience like no other. With the flexibility to switch between different combat styles, each character comes alive with their own set of weapons and skills. The blend of 2D and 3D anime aesthetics offers a visual feast, ensuring every moment in the game feels like you're part of a larger, vibrant world. Use my link to register now to join the closed beta test and step into the shoes of a legendary proxy in this urban fantasy realm. Grim Dawn in 2023, it's been about seven years since I've checked in on this game. I last played it in early access, but since then the game's released multiple expansions and gone through a lot of changes, so as I've checked out a lot of other ARPGs this year, I figured it was a good time to check out Grim Dawn, especially as they've recently announced a brand new expansion on the horizon. Here's my character from all those years ago, surprisingly it hasn't been deleted or reset. For this video, let's just make a new character. Two options, male or female. Let's call my character Compost because I'm going to be putting my enemies in the dirt. There he is, a ragged wayward traveller. Before we jump into it, I've got a few options on the side here. I've got main campaign, custom game or crucible. Apparently this is like DLC content that I've just purchased available from level one. Here I have the options single player, join multiplayer or host multiplayer. Then you've got the difficulty levels here, normal, veteran, elite or ultimate. I haven't unlocked these two though. Let's just jump into it. Comic book styled intro cutscene and we're in the game. Responsive movement, the UI has a nice style and theme about it. Voice acted character. Characters. Straight away I can look at the mini-map and the star indicates where I need to go. Go talk to John. It's a lot of dialogue. I ain't reading all that. I'm happy for you. I'm oh, sorry it happened. Attack some zombies. I like how blood splatters out from the enemies when you kill them. Let's zoom in a bit for immersion. Taking quite a bit of damage and dealing very little damage for a level one. Perhaps this is veteran difficulty coming into effect. Where does the game actually want me to go? There's no indication on the mini-map. It just says under burial hill oh burial hills over here like fucking it's in africa okay so i guess i've just gotta make my way over there if that's the case i kind of like that that you just like just gotta fight your way through it and just get on with it basically you don't have to do like tons of busy work quests i haven't reached the point where the game's asked me to choose a class or anything of that sort yet let's get some levels in me so i can do that level two. Oh, here we go i guess this is where you choose your class so there's currently nine different classes soldier demolitionist occultist nightblade arcanist shaman inquisitor necromancer and oath keeper you've got devotion and this is like another progression tree so the last time i played this game i was a shaman this time i want to be an arcanist We'll go with the arcane missile. Let's put this on my hotbar as my right click. That'll do the job. Okay, arcane missile seems good. You shoot it and uh, the projectile bounces a bit. Level three. So we've got an elite mob spawn already. Give it a zap. Bunch of loot explodes with yellows and a green. Oh, I've actually got some uh, points to spend here. Yeah, I'm going to be a mage, so I guess spirit. <laughs> I kind of like that there's only three attribute stats. Nice and simple. And this item's dropped, and I think I can apply it to a weapon. Let's apply it to the mace. It just gives an additional uh, effect. So I've just equipped these two things. Apparently, I've got two new abilities. Poison, bomb, and fire, blast. Back to Devil's Crossing. Talk to the captain. Kill the reanimator. Bunch of XP. Reputation. And now I've got multiple quests pop up. The game's given me all of these quests, but the UI doesn't seem to help me in identifying where I actually need to go 
to do the quests. So I've got like tons of tasks to do here in Devil's Crossing, but the mini map isn't helping whatsoever with that. There's supposed to be a water pump I need to help with. I mean, I would if it was displayed on the mini map. Six quests on the go and the game's just started. Why do games feel the need to do this? Just gangbang you with quests. Just ram your quest log. Fill it up, lads. Okay, so just do map completion. And I'm sure I'll come across the things I need to do for the quest. I think I'm overthinking things. Just go forward. Kill mobs. Don't worry about the quest so much. If a quest pops up and it's convenient, then I'll do it. Oh, wait, what? You can move the camera around? How have I just noticed this? Yo, I never knew that about Grim Dawn. I've always thought that this game was fixed position. Pretty huge revelation. The in-game music's pretty cool, I have to say. Like, it really sets a nice, dark vibe for the game. Like, really menacing. My damage has already more than doubled since uh, I learned this ability. Yes, yeah, so, like tripled. And we're already, like, one-shotting things. So this, I'm starting to feel the sense of progression start to become satisfying. Yes, I only have one ability, but I'm having fun with that one ability. I'm just popping mobs now. We're just going to go ultimate glass cannon build. That's the play. I'm doing so much more damage now. Every level up and every point that you spend, you really feel the upgrade, which I really like about this game. And it's something that I really loved about last epoch as well desecrated shrine corrupted needs to be cleansed yes so these shrines are what give me the devotion points shrine cleansed pops out a bunch of loot another devotion point spend it points available one two 18 percent damage bonuses why not yeah and that's opened up like multiple pathways yeah like i'm sure i'd want to take both of these at some point anyway oh okay summoned a bunch of mobs oh level 15 Level 12, bit of kiting required here. Okay, play this smart. It seems like I can in indeed kill it. Is it gonna reset? Shoot it in the ass. Wait. Yeah, just fucking kite him. <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. I pressed spacebar to try and dodge the ability, but I've paused the game. And I feel like when I unpause the game, I'm gonna be dead. Oh, almost. <laughs> Oh, we got him. That's a lot of loot. Level 15 mob, and I'm I'm not even level 10 yet. Shrine cleared. That's a lot of greens. My loot in this game is pretty fun. I'm going to have to apply a loot filter soon. Oh, this is a blue item. I actually haven't seen any blue items drop yet. Usually blue is pretty low down, and green is, like, super rare. But in this game, it, it doesn't seem to be the case. I need to, like, research what the rarities mean. Yeah, blue is epic in this game. So yellow is magic, green is rare, blue is epic. Got it. Put this in my weapon. The building system in this game is just really interesting. I'm spending time going through my inventory, sorting through my gear and building my character, but it's not frustrating. I'm kind of doing it and enjoying it because I feel like I've got a lot of control over making the build that I want so far. I don't know if that's going to continue, but so far so good. I'm so much more strong now I've sorted out my equipment a bit more. I can actually tank a bit of damage. Level 11. My mana regen is so much better now I can really spam my ability. You can tell that I'm not following a build. I've got points all over the place. So apparently if I go talk to this NPC, I can refund some points. Yes, brilliant. So I'm just going to really double down on the replicating missile for now whilst I'm leveling up. It's my most powerful ability, so why not? Let's see how much damage my single ability does right now. Oh, we're hitting like 400s now. Deleting these mobs. Energy for days as well. I like that it's really easy to respec in this game as well. Just make my one ability super OP. I always like to do that in ARPGs. Just have like one ability build, but just make that one ability giga OP. Why is that fun? I think it's fun because I have the choice of doing it. If I was kind of forced into doing that, it wouldn't be fun. Okay, another quest target over here. Nuke him down very quickly. My health regen is more than the damage he can... Never mind, no it's not. Getting a bit cocky now, am I? This game seems to be like one massive open world, from what I can tell. I'm just going from zone to zone with no loading screens. And as I uncover the map, the map just stays permanently uncovered. It feels good to just like play through the uh, levels. I was complaining about the quests a bit earlier, but it's actually not that bad. You take them, they're not a big deal. And you'll naturally just come across every quest objective whilst you're uncovering the map, it seems. 
so nothing to really stress about. At this point my inventory was getting rammed from all the drops, so I decided to finally apply a loot filter. I got dropped a helmet which gave me a self buff ability, and a mace which increased my main ability by plus two points. Combined with the progression from the devotion tree, I was now hitting like an absolute truck. After getting all these upgrades, I got a bit cocky and had my first death. In Grim Dawn, when you die, you lose some experience, but you can go back and retrieve it like in the Souls games. Cracking on with more quests, I dinged level 20, got an extra bag slot to help me handle the bombardment of loot drops, then got to the first real big boss fight of the game, Warden Krieg. That's going okay. So this seems to be like the first big boss that we've come across, Warden Krieg. Big damage, finish him off, got him. Is there going to be a phase two? Oh, now he's got 80,000 health. Yeah, good. Dodge the melee. Dodge that bloody melee, Craig. Dodge that. Oi! No! The positioning of an absolute donkey. Oh, I ran into a corner. Bro. He was almost dead. Oh, I've only got three potions left. Let's see. Has his health fully reset? Maybe the game will just allow me to go up there and finish him off. Realistically, it's probably fully reset, hasn't it? No, it hasn't. Oh, okay. It's quite forgiving. His mechanics are actually very simple. I don't even know how I died to him. Oh no, it's not where I want to be. Craig, finish him. And he's dead. GG. Bunch of loot. Well, that's the first big boss down. Back to camp. We've repaired a bridge. New area unlocked. The Arcovian foothills. Ah, nice change of aesthetic. A little bit more bright in this area. Level 24. Keep increasing that elemental damage and that crit damage. Head back to town for a bit because I think I've got some quests to hand in as well as some items I can craft. I think I've sent a blacksmith back to town. So hopefully I can finally craft some gear. Excellent, we've finally got ourselves a blacksmith. So I guess now I can craft gear. Empowered relics. Wait, I actually don't have any relics. So I've been kind of gimped for a while. Elemental damage, spirit, move speed. Oh, that sounds good. Do we have enough things? Oh, we're missing something. Tated brain matter. Where do I get that from? Ah, oh, that's a shame. So I've got everything else I need to craft it. I'm just missing this. I can also craft components to stock it into my gear. Okay, so the crafting system in this game seems quite interesting. Looks like we got a quest to hand in here. GG. Level 26. Oh, I have two choices here. So I could lie and keep this talisman or I could give it over. I've already noticed that there's quite a lot of choice when it comes to the questing. Yeah, I'm gonna give it over. Good reputation. Now I can also equip this new sword. Level 25, massive upgrade. So now I'm a great sword wielding mage, wearing plate armor. I love this game, it's so cool. The way you build your character and the way your build's constantly changing throughout the game, it's so fun. I'm hitting for like 2k now pretty consistently. This 200 sword was a massive upgrade. Got a little boss waiting for me in this pit. Let's see how quickly we can kill him. Calm down. Oh, fuck me. Here we go again. All of these damage upgrades and I'm still getting clapped. Bro, stop running. Uh, what can I do? This is the hardest monster I've fought so far in the game. Like, what the hell is that? Wow. It just... Yeah, body throwing is the way. Let's go again. Actually, maybe it's not because his health was just regening just as much as mine. It's not even a special story boss. It's just a random boss in the world. Here's what we do. We get to like level 50 and we come back for him. Except the L. Let's make a transmog, shall we? Let's go with a chunky plate set. Oh, those are some big shoulder pads. I love that this game has big chunky shoulder pads. Sword. Change it to a scythe if I want to. Apply illusion. Nice. Looking at me, you wouldn't believe I'm a mage, but I am. All right, so this here should be an absolutely massive upgrade because... I can get 30% to all damage. 30% to all damage, that is so powerful, it's almost hard to believe. Is it really going to increase my damage by 30%? There's no way. The talent tree in this game is so interesting and so fun. Like, there's so many choices that I want to explore. I can't imagine how fun it is to be, like, level 100 and just play around with different builds. Because the choices you get just seem so impactful. So now I'm creating for 3.5k. Yeah, my damage has definitely gone up. The big level 30 coming in hot. Ding, ding, ding. What's the bag situation looking like? Rough. Anything good? No. I still have none of these things. Where the f 
do you find these relics from? There has to be a way of getting them. I'm gonna Google it. The dismantling Epic Plus loot. Let's buy back my Epic gear that I've just sold. And then dismantle it. So dismantling costs stuff. Ancient Heart. Okay, that's used to make like a relic thing. Another one. Oh my god, I can actually make something. I can make a relic. Spirit, offensive ability, 5% chance of 80% lightning damage. Yeah, seems good. Not my first choice, but yay, we have a relic. Now I'm fully equipped. Okay, bags are clean. Gear is resorted. Points are spent. It's almost 3 a.m. I was supposed to go to bed. I was actually supposed to stop recording this video at like level 30, but I just want to keep playing. Can't help it. Okay, one, two, and now I can finally start putting points in this proliferation. So if I put one point in here, that's going to give me 900 energy because I've got a sword that is plus two to all skills in Arcanist. So if the next time I level up, I just put one point in each passive, then I'm essentially getting nine points. I love the gear in this game. I love the way that you can build your character in this game. It's so fun. The fact that I've just thought of that is just like super satisfying. And the best part is that I've been able to enjoy all of this without having to touch guides. I've just been able to clear all of the content so far. No issues. I feel pretty overpowered. Spoke a little bit too soon there. But um, yeah, I've been feeling pretty overpowered just going with my own YOLO build. And that's the sign of a good ARPG in my opinion. It's getting late. I need to get to bed. I don't want to stop playing though. I'm, I'm having an absolute blast. Still got 69 levels of fun until I hit max level. Fucking hell. What an absolute treat. The next day I got out of bed, didn't shower, didn't get dressed. Went straight to my computer and just started grinding out some levels on Grim Dawn off camera. This game put me in a pure grind trance and it was hard to pull myself away from the computer. Continuing from where I left off, I worked my way through the steps of Torment Dungeon and eventually got to the main boss, Grand Priest Zart Bolzian. This boss was level 37 and absolutely fucked me up, despite me leaving portals outside of the boss room and trying to body throw to get him down. The most difficult thing about this boss was the actual boss room itself. There was nowhere to move, and to get to him you have to cross a narrow walkway whilst your character is getting stuck on the environment. This for me was the worst designed part of the game I'd got to to this point. I tried rotating the camera, but the boss room here was so small, awkward, and a visual clusterfuck that I decided I'd just come back later after some upgrades. I continued progressing and fully uncovered the map with every zone I came across, starting at the Broken Hills clearing all the way through to Pine Barrens, Dead Man's Gulch, and eventually a new main hub area at Homestead. I ventured south and came across an avalanche that would cost three dynamite to clear at Prospector's Trail. This opened up another massive new area for me to explore full of devotion shrines, dungeons, and loot upgrades. At this point I was level 37 and I decided it was finally time to take a shower get dressed and turn the camera back on summon revenant oh this looks like a really good necromancer offhand i kind of want to replay this game as a necromancer as well like seeing some of the really cool necro items that have dropped whilst i've been playing this game i think necro could be insanely fun i bet the game just lets you do ridiculous things as a necro summon so many mobs i can't even imagine level 38 so in this cave was the most impossible, bullshit, difficult boss I've fought in the entire game and I need to go back for revenge now that I'm a bit stronger. This boss absolutely farmed me earlier. Surely I'm powerful enough to beat him this time. Can we do it? I'm taking a lot less damage than last time. Yes. This boss absolutely farmed me earlier. So the fact that I've just nuked it down that quickly is a testament to how much power I've gained in the past three hours. <laughs> Feels good. At this point, there's only one more mob that I want to get my revenge on. Second attempt at revenge. The bloody boss that was just sprinting at me yesterday. Oh, there's two of them now? And their abilities are different today. What? The world changes as you play through the game or something? There was only one of them yesterday, and now there's two, and the mechanics are different. That's wild. Big damage. We just fucking tank it. Ooh, no, we won't. Here's me thinking, yeah, I've gained so much power and DPS, literally tripled my DPS since yesterday. I'm going to go back for revenge. Nah, the game ain't having none of it. Okay, let's try and kite this time. Yeah, not really. Still borderline unkiteable. I'm going to kill that boss. 
I can't end the video until I kill that boss. He just farmed me too much yesterday and I need some revenge. Body throwing doesn't even work that well in this game because every time a boss kills you, they get like 30% of their health back upon your death. So if you're going to body throw, you need to do more than 30% of their health. Get this one first. He's almost down. Keep kiting. Heal. Big damage. Okay, there's one. Revenge is a dish. Best served cold. All right, this guy's probably easy. Champion of the pit. There's about to be a new champion. It's me. I love this game. GG. Oh, he's he life stealing. Never mind about the calling an early GG there. What am I doing? He was on 3k health. Never had a boss embarrass me so hard in my life. Come on. Oh, thank God for that. We finally have closure. And with that, I think I'm finally happy to wrap up this video. Yeah, I thought the video would end here, but the next few days I just kept playing. I checked out a DLC game mode called Crucible, which is basically some wave defense mode that you can do as a nice change of pace from the standard leveling. I continued with the MSQ fighting a giant spider queen boss and eventually the main boss of the original MSQ. This put me through an epic cutscene, gifted me my first legendary weapon, and from there I was basically ready to start the DLC. Before ending this video for real though, I wanted to craft a transcendent relic, which required me to do a bit of farming, reputation stuff and recipe unlocks. Along the way I got a god tier rare medal drop that was perfect for my one button build. This took the DPS on my replicating missile from 18k all the way to 23k. I tested my damage on the MSQ final boss again and absolutely melted it. At this point I was basically one shotting everything. Then at level 51 I was able to finally craft my transcendent relic after even more upgrades, which took my DPS from 28k to 31k and gave me a new ability. I was feeling powerful, I had a cool transmog, and life was going good. So I'm recording this a few days later and it turns out that Grim Dawn was one of those games that I just couldn't stop playing after I stopped recording. Right now I'm level 51 and as you can see I ridiculously doubled down on the replicating missile build that I was using from the start of the game. Right now apparently I've got 32,000 DPS with this ability. I haven't tested it out yet because I've just had a massive ability with this, uh, this haunt relic and a bunch of other stuff. I think I beat the final boss of the base game and I'm now working through the DLC stuff. And I have to say, this is just my favorite ARPG, straight up. I have never had this much fun with an ARPG and not once have I felt the need to go online and look for a build. How much damage do we do? Yeah, everything just melts. We are so strong. I just feel like the gearing and build system in this game is so intuitive compared to other ARPGs. I love the, how the uh, components work, how the upgrade system works. Everything just makes sense. I love the skill trees. I love how impactful every upgrade feels. And I haven't even selected a second class yet. I'm still like pure arcanist. From the start of the game, I could have gone with like dual class, but just didn't even feel the need. Then you've got this devotion tree, which is pretty interesting. Honestly, this is straight up my favorite ARPG. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to beat all of the DLC, play this game in my spare time. Never expected to enjoy this game so much. Nothing more to be said, really. Let's go to the pros and cons for real this time. So after revisiting Grim Dawn in 2023, my thoughts are as follows. Pros. Grim Dawn for me is one of the most intuitive ARPGs I've ever played when it comes to creating your own build, crafting gear, and interfacing with the component system. Everything just made sense, and I love that I didn't feel the need to look up a guide online. Upgrades in Grim Dawn feel extremely impactful, from leveling up and spending your talent points to item drops. There's so many items and abilities that give you massive percentage power increases, which just makes you want to keep playing. The user interface is clean and easy to navigate. I love the semi-open world design in this game, as well as the map UI that allows you to see all of the connected areas you've been to. Simply looking at the map as a new player at the start of the game gets you excited for the journey ahead. 
The music and atmosphere in this game is top tier. The game has a perfectly designed transmog system which is something I definitely wasn't expecting. I think the game's crafting and reputation system is well designed. Some factions have recipes that you'll want to unlock for nice upgrades later on, which adds an additional layer to the sense of progression. Unlike a lot of ARPGs, the game gives you full control over the camera. You're able to fully rotate it 360 degrees as well as zoom in and out. The audio visual feedback from the combat feels amazing. With the specific build I'm playing, I love the satisfying feeling of exploding massive groups of enemies. The game has a lot of variety with its environments, and unlike most ARPGs, I didn't feel too much repetition when traversing the world. The game has a dual class system which is also super unique, although I've been having so much fun with my one button arcanist build that I still haven't got to that part even at level 53. Something I didn't touch on during this video, but the game has an active modding community that's generating more content for the game, making improvements and adding to the game's longevity. And Grim Dawn just has this old school charm about it, not only from the gameplay and visuals, but in that it's a buy to play game that gives you a fully complete experience with no cash shop. Cons. Whilst I appreciate that Grim Dawn does have a loot filter, I wish there were more options in that loot filter, such as having the ability to filter out equipment by their attribute requirements, or to require that gear has more than one of my stat requirements before dropping. The loot filter also seems to be missing some options, such as elemental damage, for example. Even with my current loot filter, I'm still spending about 20 minutes sorting through a lot of junk in my bag after a good gameplay session. It's not a big deal, but it's definitely an area of improvement. As much as it's definitely a pro that you can rotate the camera, I think there's some moments in the game where this leads to some awkward level design, where your biggest challenge is figuring out which camera angle is best for the encounter. I really felt this during the boss fight with the Grand Priest. So far, compared to other ARPGs, I've found that the main story boss fights have been a bit lacklustre. This could be due to my character being overpowered though, and graphically the game isn't the best in 2023 when compared to its competitors. Overall, Grim Dawn is one of the best ARPGs I've ever played. If I was to chart the fun I've had with this game to the time played, it would look something like this. The game starts off kinda slow, but very quickly becomes more and more interesting as you start making a build, getting introduced to various systems, start crafting components and exploring the world, before long you're just addicted. I just absolutely love the overall design of this game and as a fairly average ARPG enjoyer, not a beginner but not ultra hardcore, I loved that I was able to forge my own path and overcome the game's challenges without feeling the need to look up build guides online. It's a gritty, satisfying and highly intuitive ARPG with an old school vibe that I absolutely recommend playing and I can't wait for the new expansion coming in 2024. But that's it for this video, as always let me know your thoughts on Grim Dawn in the comments below. Are you excited for the new expansion? Do you prefer this game over Diablo 4 or PoE? If you enjoyed this vid then help us out with a like for the algorithm gods. Social media on screen, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.